Namashibaya Shantaya. Will you like to join with me, children? Huh? Please. Namashibaya Shantaya Karanatraya Hitabi Nividayami Chatmanam Gatistam Parameshwara This evening <clears throat> I came over here to talk about Shiva the great God because the yajna that is going to be performed and the, with the main question who Rudra is who Rudra who is Rudra and this yajna that will be performed it says Maha Rudra Yajna. So continuously every month there will be someone discussing about the Lord Shiva. And today I got the chance, this is the second in the series. And I was thinking that I will talk about the Shiva. Now I think I should not have come. Because all these children they know everything about Rudra and the Shiva. And whatever the question she was asking, before she completed answer came. Then I was thinking, shall I? Then I told, no, since I am sitting in the front seat, I cannot go. So I am here. <laughs> and you are very correct. As when she was asking the meaning, who is Shiva? What is the meaning of Shiva? Auspicious. That is very correct. But where from the auspiciousness come, the holiness come? What is this holiness? What is this auspiciousness? That when you are thinking about God, then your mind become purified and you become holy, you become auspicious. And that's why in the household, the devotees, they invite the monks, they invite the ascetics and the holy devotees they are thinking that they are auspicious, they are holy. And if they can become holy, they can become auspicious. Think about the God Shiva himself, who is known as Parameshwara. He is the Supreme Lord. Parama Ishwara, the Supreme Lord. And he is also Maheshwara, the Great Lord. Maha Ishwara, the great Lord, and Mahadeva. Mahadeva means the great God. Swami Vivekananda composed, and there he is mentioning his great God, Mahadeva. And Mahadeva himself is the source of all auspiciousness, and he is the personification of the purity. The Shiva is having 10,000 names. Dasha Sahasranama. They say 1,000. Shiva is 10,000 names. And here we will be discussing about the Mahadeva, the great God. And this word Mahadeva, we find the reference in the Oitariya Brahmana and also in the Rig Veda. Now we were discussing about the auspiciousness and what is this auspiciousness? Thinking about God. By thinking about God you get your mind purified. And what is that God actually? It is a knowledge. When we talk about God, think about God, what is that God? It is knowledge. What is that knowledge? That Brahman is the truth, all pervading is the Brahman. When we are knowing that Brahman, then only we become holy. How we know Brahman? When we can remove the ignorance. They say one by one, when you remove the ignorance, what is that ignorance again? In one word we can say ignorance means ego. The children don't understand 
and I don't ask them to understand it. But the grown-up people should understand what is ego. And ego is the problem that is creating all everything over here. In everyday life, clashes, difficulties, problems comes from the ego. And what is this ego? I, I, I. What is this I? This body. Where was this body before birth? I don't know. Where this body will go after death? I don't know. Then why you are fighting? I don't know. So without knowing, I am doing it. And that is called ignorance. The moment I come to know that this body is nothing. But within this body, inside this body, there is something which is Atman. And that is called knowledge. And Shiva, the great God, is the Guru. Guru is one who is all the time removing the darkness, the darkness of this ignorance. And this, the moment this darkness goes away, then they get the Amrit, the nectar. And that is why the beautiful stotra is there, is a Dakshina Murti stotra. Dakshina, Dakshina means the south. Murti, he is facing the south. Usually the Hindus, they will never face the south. Why? Because that is considered as the door of death. That is the doorway of death. So, the Dakshina Murti, but the God, the Guru, the Shiva, he is facing the south. Why? He is all the time keeping vigil, whether his followers, his devotees, are they going to the death? And what is death actually? And death means in a circle, birth and death, birth and death, that circle goes. The Guru keeps an eye that his disciples, his followers should not be in that circle. So this is called Dakshina Murti. And in a Mahamrityunjaya Stotra, wonderfully it mentioned, Swarga, Apubarga, Dataram, Srishti, Stiti, Antakarinam, Namami Shirasa Devam Kimna Mrittu Karishyati So he never caring about the death. It's a powerful thought. All things that we are afraid of what? Death only. A little bit of suffering we are afraid. But major problem our fear is on death. Because of the death I won't be here. What will happen? So this type of thought always tormentors. And here is the guru who says, you need not to bother about death. Why? Because I am here. I will give that knowledge by which you can conquer the death. And here in the Mahamrityunja Stutra he says, what can death do to one who salutes with his head that God who grant heaven and salvation? And who looks after creation, preservation, and destruction. I don't know the name of the MC. It was a beautiful issue she was organizing. And I was immediately calculating, you know, <laughs> whether I will invite her to, in some of our program, to do the MC work. So, <laughs> and she was mentioning one question the children were asking, and she asked, uh, that is why Shiva is the god of destruction. That we will come to that point. How come the Shiva can be god of destruction? Here in another stotra, let me read out. A, they are mentioning. Bishyam darpana drishyamana nagari tullam nijantar gatam Adi Shankaracharya. He is composing this Dakshina Murti Stotra. Bishwam Darpana Drishya Mana Nagari Tullam Nijantar Gatam Pashyan Atmani Mayaya Bahiri Bodhbhutam Yatha Nidraya Yasakshi Kurute Prabodha Samaye Swatmanameva Dvayam 
ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಮೂರ್ತೇ ನಮ ಇದ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ಶ್ರೀದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತ ದಕ್ಷಿಣಾಮೂರ್ತಿ ಇಸ್ ದ ಗುರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ವಂಡರ್ಫುಲ್ ವರ್ಡ್ ದ ಶಂಕರ ಇಸ್ ಮೆನ್ಷನಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ ವೆನ್ ಯು ಸೀ ದ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅ ಮೀರ್ ಆರ್ ಯು ಎಫೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ನ you know that it's only the image and similarly when one the enlightened one see that image within his mind the whole universe he is not affected he is there he is seeing everything but not affected and that is called dakshina murti and there's a story always in hinduism they will tell some stories to make things very easy for understanding even the children can understand and the story goes like this in the heaven lord vishnu was taking rest and he said to his gatekeepers see i am very tired today i am going to take rest and you should not allow anyone to enter into my quarter they were standing and moment he entered in and he was sleeping he was taking rest then the four great sages came sanaka sananda sanatana sanat kumar this four great sages they came to meet vishnu and they asked the gatekeepers go and tell the god that we have come they were in dilemma and they were thinking what to do god has asked our master has asked not to allow anyone to disturb now here are the great sages if we are not listening to them and not allowing them to go in they will curse us and we will suffer then afterwards all of them see this is called shevaka the shevaka means they are ready to sacrifice for the little comfort of the master they discussed among themselves let us go and face these curses we will suffer but our master will take rest so they refused and immediately these four sages they cursed them you go and suffer in the earth in the heaven all the time they are enjoying and when the people come over here take birth in the human being a lot of sufferings and when this was going on when they were cursing these four sages lord vishnu came out and he told how come that you being great sages could not control your anger why you have cursed them they have only maintained they have only followed my orders but anyway i will curse you go and suffer again in this earth then these four sages begged vishnu please have mercy on us just for a moment we lost the control and now you have to go down okay i can give you an opportunity go and meet lord shiva he is now there on the earth as dakshinamurti as a guru go and learn stay with him and learn the true knowledge and they went came to the lord shiva and shiva sitting under a banyan tree as a young man that ascetic and he was facing the south and giving the teaching what he said to these people eternal truth see the two things only now i am talking for the elderly people so only two things are there one is the purusha another is prakriti a purusha is eternal and the prakriti the matter it is also eternal for those who cannot understand it so the prakriti also eternal purusha also eternal but the purusha is ever eternal and prakriti the maya this conception of this world it changes breaks for those who can understand it so prakriti the matter the source of time and space that is your body and mind shiva told 
and that is what born and reborn know purusha and be free so that was the teaching and the, again shiva is known as the limitless ananta unchanging akshara formless nirakara transcendent sarvavyapi this aspect again there's a narration there's a story i think some of the children must be able to tell it but still let me tell you that very simple story but wonderful story once the brahma is not brahman brahma brahma and the vishnu uh, they were yeah brahma and vishnu they were arguing who is great while they were traveling they were arguing suddenly they saw an effulgent enormous pillar the light pillar of light and that has no beginning no end and they were wondering what is it so both of them decided that one will go to the top to see the end of it and another will go down to see the end of it so beginning and the end they travel brahma and vishnu vishnu went to the down and the brahma up then after a long trouble they came down and met and said no we couldn't find it and this was the lord shiva then he, the voice came you should not be proud that this is the great lord shiva in the kenu upanishad also we find this type of uh the, the teachings na tatra chakshu gachati na bhag gachati no manaha this our eyes cannot reach over there the god you cannot see god through this eyes even our mind cannot conceive about the god how big he is we the moment we talk about the god big we talk about the ocean we talk about the the sky we talk about the mountain himalaya that is the conception but we do not know what is god bhagwan sri ramakrishna he is telling you cannot say this is the end of god in his bengali language he said bhagwaner iti kara jayna and then this benign shiva the gentle shiva and please tell me the time okay when the, please show me the time then one person he was going on talking in delhi ashram it happened long back and he is not stopping and next people they will have to talk then what how to stop him then another person told he was in the army i was also with him i know how to stop him how then i'll do that he went at the back and showed like this immediately this person stopped because in the army this this is stop firing so he stopped the firing <laughs> so if you show me such like thing then i will stop fine firing <laughs> this is a beautiful story that is called the purantaka that the three demons they with their mystical power created three flying cities and they, they with these cities they used to go and they used to make travel for the other people what to do then the brahma went to shiva and told you have to destroy them but the problem was that could be destroyed only with one arrow and you have to destroy with only one arrow shot all the three that has to be destroyed with the only one arrow and this is where the name rudra came who is rudra that is the question rudra is the shiva is a great archer and this great archer the shiva she was asking what is the name of the shiva's bow you know so this is the archer the great archer the shiva he is rudra rudra name was long back when the shiva name was the, not there rudra name was in our ancient scriptures particularly in the vedas there were gods the rudra 
Agni, all these things afterwards came in, merged in one God, that is Shiva. This Rudra, this Shiva, he went and he shot that arrow and killed all the three demons with their flying cities with one shot. And everybody was so happy. Shiva went, when all those three cities were burning, then he burned into ashes. He went and took three fingers, dipped in that ashes and marked like this. So the Shiva Bhaktas, all the, the followers of the Shiva, you will find they are marking their forehead with the three ashes mark. That is called Tripurari and Tripurantaka. These three cities, they were destroyed by the Shiva. Shiva is benign, Shiva is gentle, Shiva is courteous, but Shiva is Rudra also. This Rudra and his name became Birupaksha, Birupa. When we are talking with you, we are looking at you, our eyes is so benign, so gentle, so nice. But when a person is angry, what becomes? His eyes totally changed. His eyes will be red, he will be looking in a different way. That is called Birupa Aksha. The Birupa Aksha. Shiva became Birupa Aksha when he got the news that the Shati, that story all of you know, the Shati, he, she has killed herself. And then his eyes changed. He created from his own power. One is Birabhadra, another is Bhadra Kali. Birabhadra and the Bhadra Kali, they went and killed the Daksha, destroyed the everything. When everything was destroyed, then the gods, they gave the name Hara. Hara means the ravisher, the one who destroys. That is the Shiva, is the Hara. Daksha Pajapati, he was very egoistic person. And that is why they beheaded. This Birabhadra beheaded him. Now, without the Daksha Pajapati, how the whole world will be maintained? So Vishnu went to Shiva and told, please do something. You must have to give life back to the Daksha Pajapati. But they need, because the head of the Daksha Pajapati was burned in the fire. So they got a goat nearby. With that head, that was placed on the body of the Daksha Prajapati and Shiva gave the life. That is the story, it goes like that. And this Daksha Prajapati with his goat head started praising Shiva. So we can understand only the Lord when you get a knock from the God. Because all the time we are thinking that I, 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 when the, that blow comes down on us, then only we realize, like the Daksha Prajapati, and we become very humble. And that's why you will find that in a tradition, they will be sacrificing the goat, remembering that Daksha Prajapati is the symbol of ego. The goat sacrifices is the symbol of sacrificing ego. And Shiva, he also became benevolent and his name became Shankara. This Shiva, the Shankara, the benevolent, and he took the lethal poison. That is exactly what the question answer was going on. The poison he took because when the, they were churning the Samudra Mantana, at that time, they found, you know, when you are churning the ocean, so many good things came. All gods came and they took it away. But when the poison came, everybody was running away. Then only one god came. He was not invited to come. Nobody called him to come. But seeing the suffering of the people, suffering of the cosmos, he came. He, he was ready to drink that poison. And there's a story that the, the Shati Ma, she came running and caught hold of the 
throat so that poison didn't go inside. That's all stories. But you know what is the churning? Now the Hinduism is full of symbolism. Now we say that Shira Shamudra was churned. What is that Shira Shamudra? If we go, go to Google search, will you find the Shira Shamudra anywhere? Even the Google will fail. He doesn't know where is Shira Shamudra. Shira Shamudra is within our heart. When you are churning our heart, and if you see the one after another, the God is telling, I will be the tortoise, because you need a hard surface to put a rod, and that parbat will be the rod. Then you need a robe, so that snake, he will be the robe. Now you both, now you churn, the one side Ashura, another is Devatas. That means our bad thoughts, our bad tendencies, our selfishness in one side, another is everything good. So Devata and Ashura, the people may think that the Devata, they were not giving the proper portion of that Amrit to the Ashuras. Who are the Ashuras? My own thoughts, bad thoughts. And what is this churning? Meditation. When you try to meditate, what you need first? Complete faith on God. There is God. That is the back of the tortoise, the shell of the tortoise. Keeping that great faith and the determination, I am going to control my mind. That is that Mainak Parvat. Then you are churning. And sometimes good thoughts are coming, bad thoughts are coming, like that the churning. And when you meditate for some time, you get a lot of feelings. Just now, when I was coming over here, one American boy came and he was telling, he is practicing meditation for a long time. And he was telling, Swamiji, I saw Lord Shiva. He is asking me and he is dancing like this. Some type of experiences is coming. Instead of having the experience that somebody is coming to kill you, if you see the Lord Shiva, is it not good? So this type of things come, so many things in the, if you read the Raja Yoga of Swami Vivekananda or the Patanjali Yoga Darshan, so many things through meditation one can gain supernatural power and that is why one afterwards become egoistic. I am holier than thou and that ego is called hala hala, that is the poison. If that poison goes and mix it in your system, you are dead. If you look at the lives of so many great sages, because of this ego, the last huddle, they are all done. So that is why the Lord Shiva, he took the halahala hala means, he is teaching, you have to keep your ego over here. And this with this ego, it can never be removed. Ego will be there, eye consciousness will be there. Now Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is teaching us how to handle this ter terrible ego, this poison. Turn it towards God. When you are telling that I am the disciple of so and so, I am the son or daughter of the God, do you think I am ordinary? That is ego. But as a good ego, you are turning towards God. Utilize that ego. It is a tremendous force. But when you are utilizing that ego for the realization of God, it helps you. So that is how the ego. And then we find the Chandra, Chura. The Chandra, the moon, he was cursed by the Prajapati. And there was no one to give him shelter. Then Shiva was there ultimately. Come to me. Be over here on my head and nobody will dare to touch you. So whenever there is no one in this world to save you, just remember Lord Shiva is there. He is all the time giving us the, uh, our protection. And similarly the Ganga, he was holding the Ganga in his matted hairs. 
and Shiva is powerful again this is a very important point Shiva is powerful when the Shakti is with him when there is no Shakti with the Shiva Shiva is Shabha just dead body that's why in the Kali Murti if you see and this idea they have given in the form in the Kali Murti if you look at the Kali Murti you will see the goddess Kali standing on the Lord Shiva and Shiva is lying like a dead man Shiva is having all power all knowledge but inactive same knowledge same power when active that is Kali it is not the mother goddess or the father god Shiva it is not the male or female it is the same consciousness when not active Shiva when active it is Kali so here we find at the Shiva and Shakti in the Lalita Sahasranama that will be chanted over here I heard at the time of the Yajna the Shiva the great god and he is making this the Lalita is the goddess Durga who is this Lalita is the goddess Durga and what is the meaning of the Lalita active activity that is the Lalita then here the goddess Durga Parvati Kali and Bhagavati all that is the power of Lord Shiva the Shakta school believe that non-dual Brahman is not only pure being but also pure will one is pure being and one is pure will both being without will is good for nothing it is nihila sunya and the will without being absurd so I know many things but I won't work the three uh, or five friends in some function they drank a lot and then they were returning back suddenly one fell down and the four others fully drunk they started crying oh our one friend has died now we cannot leave him over here we must have to carry him to the burning guard so they got one you know in our country they'll be taking the dead bodies on a some kind of in a bed so that bed was arranged they took him this man who was simply lying down he was not dead at all as because he drank a lot he fell down and then he thought these people are carrying me that is good let them carry he was lying down and the other four they were carrying with the cot and the bed he was lying over there in one place there was a, the diversion of the road so they started discussing among themselves the four friends which side to go left or right then from the top he said I know where, which way to go but now as because I am dead I won't tell you <laughs> so he was lying over there nicely so similarly the Shiva lying down at the feet of the goddess Kali knows everything but won't tell and the, this is the goddess Kali activity here we find the Lalita this Lalita Sahasranama they will be chanting this is the nothing but the praising the Shakti unless and until this Shakti is revoked Shiva cannot help Adi Shankaracharya who was actually an Advaita Vedantin he is writing a beautiful poem about this the Stotra they say that uh, here in Shondar Jalahari, the first 50 or 55 slokas, they say that they're composed by the Ganesha himself, and the balance was composed by Adi Shankaracharya. Here, the Shondar Jalahari, the first Totra Shankaracharya wrote, Shiva Shakta Yukta Yadi Bhavati, Shakta Prabhavitum. Shiva, the consciousness, Shakta Yukta Yadi Bhavati if it is joined with the Shakti Shakta Prabhavitum then only the reaction comes Nached Evam Deva Nakhalu Kushala Spanditum Mapi without that without the Shakti even the Shiva cannot move Spanditum Mapi this is the 
the beautiful way and Shiva makes the link between the destruction. Now the question came, what is destruction actually? Now you, when you go to sleep, what happens? And when you don't see even the dreams in your sleep, what happens? Where do you remain? Is there any world for you when you are sleeping without any dream? Is not that destruction? That is destruction. The Shiva, he is meditating. And that meditation at that time, all this world, this universe, with all his varieties, is totally absent. And that is called destruction. Here we find that Shiva withdrawing all the saints and keeping the mind still in Samadhi. And that is called, he is the Lord of destruction. And again he is resettling the whole thing. This is the Shakti. And they call the Shiva Shakti is expressed in Dadasha, Shiva Linga. And this is called Jyoti Linga. Jyoti means the enlightenment. And linga means the symbols. Here, friends, I will take another one or two minutes to tell you the symbols of real Shiva. When you go to see the Shiva, nowadays we find the Shiva is a very powerful man with his trident, he's ready to destroy. Is that the Shiva? Let us see what Shiva means. Shiva means, as we all the time, repeating again and again is all peace it is benevolence how can he destroy he is the creator he is the sustainer and he is also taking us to a new place and giving us a new shape the destruction doesn't mean the death in the way we think is a new shape transformation into a totally new perspective here, if we look at the Shiva statue in the Murti, what we find? First, we find Nandi Maharaj. The traditional Hindus, they will come. The Nandi is all the time facing the Shiva because he don't, won't go here and there. And the traditional Hindus will come and sit down at the back of the Nandi, the, that is the bull, and through the horns, both the horns, they will look to the Shiva and that say, this is very good. So the, all this system and the rituals, nothing wrong. But who is this Nandi? Why this the bull? The bull actually is the symbol of power and prosperity. Bull is the power and bull is the prosperity. Our country where this conception grew, that is a all people, most of the people, they were cultivators. They needed these bulls. So the bull is the symbol of power and prosperity. Damaru is the symbol of the Omkara, which is continuously going on. If we are quietly sitting, meditating, calm, one can listen to these constantly Omkara coming. Snake that is hanging on, the, on Shiva, it is the symbol of yoga. The crescent moon is the symbol of pleasant and peace. The trident, the trishula, is the symbol of destroyer of three tapa. We always, they, if you, the traditional people will always, always they say, always they will say three tapa. Tapa means burning. Three means three. Three different type of problems. Where from it comes? Fast. It comes from Daiva. So Adi Daiva. You are coming over here, suddenly the snow, the rain and all these, the problem. And then it goes down like this, the finger. I used to tell our devotees, to, it is easy to remember. First you point your finger on the top, Adi Daiva. Then Adi Bhauta. I was coming here, I was a little late. I was talking with Subbu, and then one person came, he was in great mood, he was slowly driving, and I cannot come first. So, it is so the Adi Bhautika, suddenly this person came in between, and uh, in front of our car, and this Bhuta means, 
this type of all our oh, this is okay and uh, this bhuta all the beings they create sometimes problem so adi daivika adi bhautika and then the finger should go straight to the heart person's heart that is adhyatmika i own suddenly my body some ache some problem comes so three types of problems are coming adi daivik adi bhautik and the adhyatmik shiva is sitting or all the time wearing a tiger skin that means the controller of the desire and then the elephant hides sometime in some places it is putting on his body there's a controller of tamaguna the all bad qualities and sometimes you will see that the shiva is holding a deer that means is controlling the frickle mindedness and the matted hair and sometimes one lady comes with the matted hair now it has become a decoration fashion but the, what is the matted hair of the shiva the shiva's matted hair they say it is all the karma phala of the jeevas the different karma phalas of the jeevas are all stored over here and we have to suffer either good or bad whatever we do and the pure white color is the symbol of sattva guna sometimes some people will say we don't like the chicago because of the lot of snow i think of shiva the sattva guna all white and there is no other color but the white this sattva guna means all love all purity all unselfishness and shiva because of the pure sattva guna he is asutosha is very in very simple way you can please him for the other gods and goddesses you have to prepare food you have to cut the fruits you have to do these you have to do that but for the shiva om namah shivaya and little bit of water even in this cold the other night all they were pouring water and the milk and then the uh, so many other things also but shiva is very happy at least he is remembering me the child is remembering me so i am happy shiva is ashutosha and sometimes this ashutosha the pure ashutosha makes problem and with this story i will end one person he was praying to shiva please give me some power so that i can control the whole universe and he was going on praying to shiva and shiva became very happy he came and told what do you want i like to burn anyone comes near me by touching him the shiva told if you put your right hand on the head of anyone he will be burned to ashes i give this power to you but very careful when you are using it this person was a demon and he said to shiva but i don't feel anything in this hand let me try whether it is really acting putting my right hand on your head then she got all what i gave you the word and you were not believing no 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 i will simply just taste we'll see whether it is working and he wanted to touch the head of shiva shiva started running in a good person he never knew how to control this type of people so he was running and he knew only one person can save in this situation that is vishnu the vishnu has to maintain he is the administrator he knows how to behave with what people how uh, the things should be handled so he ran to the vishnu and vishnu told what happened maybe we can talk like this in our own term dada what happened maybe he is calling the shiva what happened to you and shiva told brother this is the thing that fellow he was doing worship i uh, worshiping me and asked this then i gave and now he wanted to test the same thing on my head then the vishnu told okay you hide i will see when that person came vishnu told what's the matter why you are running he told this is the thing i want to test whether the shiva the whatever boon he has given is true or not then the vishnu immediately he mesmerized that person with his maya he said oh my good man for this you were running you need a head nothing else so close to your body your own head is there 
you put your hand on your own head and you just test it no problem whether it really works or not then he found yes that's true my head is so near he put that head hand on his head and what happened that name became bhashmashura he became dust he became ashes this is the bhashmashura friends children ladies gentlemen devotees this is a great time and i really want to thank the organizers they are painfully organizing the wonderful uh, this programs again and again every month but please remember we go to god we pray to him but with that prayer we should not burn ourselves thank you very much om namah shivaya Oh no no this okay I'll give to them. Oh, oh it's mine. No. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh. Can you please give me a little oh, water now? Sure. Everybody who has heard anything today, please come to the side. Everybody, please come. 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 Everybody, please come.